Welcome. In today's video, we're going to be doing a couple projects to help with heat soak underneath the hood of the Cherokee. The first thing we're going to be doing is installing the Jeep fuel rail and injector cover kit from Design Engineering. And along with that, we're going to be installing the heat shroud from Design Engineering. Then the second thing we're going to be doing is making DIY hood spacers to help with airflow underneath the hood. So before we start tearing apart the Jeep, let's open these things up and make sure we have everything. With the fuel rail and injector cover kit, I did see that it comes with really detailed instructions, so it should make the install pretty easy. And it does come with six injector covers to help keep those cool, and a shield that goes between the manifold and the fuel rail itself, along with a shield that Velcros around the fuel rail. Then from there, it comes with 12 o-rings that go on the injectors to help reinstall them and two of the most important things stickers and from there the last thing is the heat shroud itself it is a three quarter inch inner diameter by three foot heat shroud that i'm going to be putting on the hard fuel line that goes up to the fuel rail i will have links to both of these products down in the description below so you can do this project on your rig also and along with that, I do have dielectric grease for the O-rings for the injectors and hose clamps to hold the heat shroud onto the hard fuel line. And the final project we'll be doing is DIY hood spacers. Down in the description below, I will have the dimensions to the square tubing and all of the hardware that I bought for this project too. And now that we've gone over everything, let's get started on tearing the Jeep apart and uh, get this project done. We're gonna get started on tearing the Jeep apart. The instructions make it extremely easy, but if I run into any issues or any tips and tricks to make this install faster, I'll let you guys know. So I forgot to mention, but you will need one of these hose removal kits because the fitting for the fuel line that goes onto the fuel rail has those teeth in it that uh, grip onto the fuel rail and holds itself on. So I will have a link to one of these in the description. Some of you might know, but if you don't, this last bolt that holds the fuel rail on is double-sided. So you will take the nut off the top that holds the clamp for the wire, and then remove the double-sided bolt to remove the fuel rail. Because I was uh, pulling on the fuel rail, and it was not going anywhere until I noticed that. Alright, so I got the fuel rail and the injectors removed. It says slightly rock back and forth, and you know, while you're pulling and the fuel rail should come out along with some of the injectors or none of them but i don't know when the last time this was pulled or taken apart at all because it was extremely hard to remove this like i, w I wasn't trying to yank on the fuel rail as hard as i can but i was giving it a, a good pull and it was pretty hard to remove so uh, i'm glad i got it off without breaking anything I did inspect each of the injectors and all of them look really good. They're just a little crusty and dirty, so I'm going to wipe them all down. Wipe down the inside of the fuel rail and where the injector goes into the manifold. And uh, from there, we'll get to installing the new O-rings on the injectors and uh, get the injectors in the fuel rail. Now that I have the injectors and the fuel rail cleaned up, I'm going to get the first heat shield installed on the fuel rail and uh, then we will get the o-rings put onto the injectors now that we have the cover on this i'm going to put on some rubber gloves and take the dielectric grease and cover each o-ring and put it on each injector then from there we will push uh, the injector into the fuel rail then we should be good to go on this all right this is uh progressing along nicely this is completely done at least this part i got all of the dielectric grease on the o-rings and I have the fuel injectors pushed into the fuel rail with the clips. So this part is completely done, but we're going to pause this for a second. And we are going to put the heat shroud onto the hard fuel line. And then once we're done with that, we'll push this into the intake manifold and we should be on the home stretch. So I think one of the issues that could cause heat soak is the fuel in the hard fuel line vaporizing from the heat radiating off the exhaust manifold because the hard fuel line is about six to eight inches away from the exhaust manifold so you know if you turn off your vehicle while you're waiting to go up an obstacle on a trail run 
or just turning off the vehicle on an extremely hot day you know that radiating heat from the exhaust manifold could vaporize the fuel in that hard fuel line so i figured putting this heat shroud on it should somewhat protect it just in case that is a real thing with the uh exhaust heat radiating to that hard fuel line so my plan is to unbolt that 10 millimeter that is holding the hard line to the bracket that's on the intake so it'll free up the entire hard line then from there i'm going to take the heat shroud and completely slide it over all of the hard fuel line and then from there we will take the hose clamps and put it around the heat shroud and the fuel line to tighten it up so then the heat shroud shouldn't fall off or move at all all right so quick update it does not work closing it beforehand so if you do do this just Leave it all the way open and uh, just wrap it around and do the Velcro while you're doing it because that is a pain. We got the fuel line completely wrapped and it is not going anywhere. Uh, keeping it all the way open and not closing it before sliding it over it is way easier. The only thing is you just got to get down on the ground to get that last part before it starts going down the firewall. But we are all done with that. So now the next step is put in the fuel rail and the injectors. So I got the injectors and the fuel rail completely reinstalled and the install was way easier than uh, removing everything. It, everything went smooth on the install and I gotta say that you have to put these wraps on the injectors as one of the last things you do before you plug in the injector wires. But I did a function test on it none of them leaked and everything went smooth. So uh, now that we're done with this part, I'm gonna remove the hood so I can start mocking up the hood spacers. So as you can see, we have the hood completely unbolted from the hinges. Uh, I couldn't take the hood off completely because of the hood release cable, but this should be fine. So since I got that off, the next step will be to use a welding magnet to stick the square tubing to the hinges. So then I could trace the bolt holes onto the square tubing. So my plan is I'm going to do this for both sides. Perfect, got them marked out for each side. So now I'm just gonna drill them out. I'm gonna drill out, you know, obviously both sides. I'm gonna try to center it up the best I can, but it should work out pretty well how they are. So I got them marked out on both sides. I'm gonna to try to center it up and just drill it as like an oblong, like how it is. But uh, I'll try to drill it out the best I can. So we will have some freedom to adjust the hood inside of these holes. And uh, now that this side is marked out, I'll move on to the other side. Then from there, we'll get to drilling. All right, now that both uh, pieces of tubing are marked out, I got this one clamped to the table. I'm gonna drill out that hole and then flip it around and drill out that one. Once those two are drilled, I'll flip the entire piece and drill out the backside. I'm gonna do that to both pieces. Well, I got the spacers drilled out and cleaned up with the grinder. It's about the best I could do with a hand drill. If I had a drill press, they would look a lot better. So uh, if you have a drill press, uh, use a large drill bit and just make a large hole on each of them so you have some you know you could adjust for the hood and everything like that but this should do because they are oblong so it gives me uh, the freedom to adjust the hood how I want but since I got them uh, drilled out cleaned up with the grinder and cleaned up with some acetone I'm gonna hang them up put a few coats of paint on them and then it will be time for the install well, I got the spacers hanging out to dry in the super awesome paint booth. Uh, I'm just letting them uh, dry a little bit longer and then it will be time for install. Well, the hood spacers are in. It was uh, actually a little bit easier than I thought. I thought I was going to be fighting with it, but no, they went in uh, pretty easy. There is the driver's side. Let's check out the passenger side. Yeah, I think the one inch by one inch tube is perfect. It leaves about a three quarter inch gap between the hood and the cowl. 
And uh, yeah, this was actually a lot easier than I thought. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are all done with this. I am extremely happy with it. I hope it does help with airflow. If it doesn't, then um, I might remove them or just after summer, I'll remove them. But uh, we'll see, I'll give you guys an update on that when the time comes. So I know quite a few people will comment down below asking why I just didn't buy hood spacers. And honestly, these hood spacers cost me $3.86. I happened to get the steel for free at my local steel shop, and all I had to buy was the hardware from Ace Hardware. So I figured instead of paying 30 bucks, and some kits are up to 50 bucks, I'd rather pay $3.86 and try it out. And if I happen to not like it, then I could just pull them off and it's not a huge waste of money. Here's how it looks with the hood closed. Not much of a gap. Maybe enough to barely stick your fingers in there. Should help with airflow. It is a, a little much to get used to, but uh, if it helps with airflow, I don't really care how it looks because it's a, uh, you know, performance over looks with uh, this Cherokee at least. But yeah, I think we are done here, guys. Uh, I am extremely happy with it and I can't wait to see if that fuel line hard wrap with the heat shroud and the fuel injector and the fuel rail covers along with the hood spacers make a difference with heat soak and keeping the Jeep cool. And that right there, you guys, is the install of the design engineering fuel rail and injector cover kit along with the heat shroud on the hard fuel line and our DIY hood spacers. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys would install your own DIY hood spacers or if you have your own tips and tricks to avoid heat soak. I really want to thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Bye.